As a result of Muslim hostility to Christianity in general, and to the Byzantine Empire in particular, early medieval Muslim scholars claimed that Christianity had brought Greek science to an end, and that it had been revived by Islam. Professor of History Nadia Maria El Cheikh writes that Arab scholars of the 9th and 10th centuries, quote, all stress that the decline began in the 4th century AD, and that Christianity was its root cause. This claim was part of Islam's ongoing culture war and battle for geographical and religious territory, intended to represent Christians as primitive, backward, and opposed to progress. As we will see, this claim isn't true. This video covers these topics. Firstly, when did Greek science start to decline? Secondly, why did Greek science decline? Thirdly, Greek science in the Roman era. And fourthly, how Christians revived Greek science. Use the timestamps in the video description to navigate the content. When did Greek science start to decline? Professor of Anthropology Pete Lestrol says, quote, The common assumption has been that Christianity was anti-intellectual, preferring faith instead of knowledge, and this was responsible for the decline of science from which it did not recover for a millennium. End quote. He then comments, quote, This is an oversimplification, as the picture is considerably more complicated. End quote. It's ironic that Muslim scholars invented this idea, given that they themselves benefited considerably from Greek scientific texts preserved and translated for them by Christians, which the Muslims sometimes acquired by conquering Christian territory, and sometimes more peacefully through trade and cultural exchange. Of course, Greek science was not science in the modern sense of the term. The Greeks did not use what we call the scientific method, they did not conduct physical experiments to test their ideas, and they had no system of making and recording reliable observations. Historians of science typically refer to their findings as proto-science, although we can use the word science as a more convenient term, as long as we understand that this was not science in the formal modern sense. So when did Greek science begin to decline? Although estimates vary, historians of science typically agree that the decline of Greek science started well before the Christian era. Writing in 1986, historian of science Professor David Lindbergh said that, quote, it is agreed by most historians of ancient science that creative Greek science was on the wane perhaps as early as 200 BC, certainly by AD 200, end quote. He added that Professor of Classics Benjamin Farrington, quote, would push the decline of Greek science even earlier to the 4th century BC. End quote. Historian Claude Mosse wrote that by the end of the 2nd century in the Christian era, quote, science seems to have fallen into a state of stagnation. End quote. This was a time when Christianity itself was still a persecuted fledgling Jewish sect without any broader social influence. Writing in 2012, physicist Frederick Seitz observed that the innovative period of Greek science, quote, reached something in the nature of a termination with the rejection of Aristarchus' solar-centred planetary system, end quote, dating the start of the decline from 300 BCE. Dr. Marco Ceccarelli likewise dated what he called, quote, the eclipse of the ancient Greek science, end quote, to the Alexandrian era of the 4th century BCE. Dr. Lalita Rana of the University of Delhi dates the decline slightly later, to around 120 BCE, writing, quote, After about 120 BC, the Greek science started to lose its originality, end quote, and adding, quote, Little of worth was produced after 200 AD, end quote. Philosopher Stephen Toulmin and historian June Goodfield similarly date the decline from 100 BCE. So, over the last 40 years, the scholarly consensus among historians of science has been that Greek science was already in decline at least 150 years before Christianity emerged, and that it was virtually dead by the 2nd century of the Christian era, long before Christians had any social impact. Why did Greek science decline? 
Although the reasons involve a complex interplay of factors, historians of science suggest a range of causes which have nothing to do with Christianity. Firstly, over time, the Greeks came to believe that the basic truths of the universe had already been discovered by Plato and Aristotle, and that further investigation was unnecessary. Instead, Greek schools simply taught their students to memorize Plato and Aristotle and to repeat their views, which crippled innovation and made it impossible to correct earlier errors. Many scholars identify this stagnation as the primary reason for the decay of Greek science. Professor of Theoretical Physics Joseph de Vries and mathematician Dr. Guido van den Berger believe that lack of experimentation was a significant contributing factor, writing, quote, The ideas of leading philosophers were accepted as decisive, while empirical tests were barely pursued, end quote. Historian Hendrik Floris Cohen observes that the Greeks lost their previous spirit of originality and inquiry, instead spending their efforts on, quote, preserving the results of scientific inquiry achieved in earlier times, end quote. He notes only a few exceptions, including the 6th century Christian philosopher John Philoponus. Dr. Olaf Peterson similarly commented that Greek thinkers became conservative, preferring to preserve and systematize the views of earlier scholars rather than generate new ideas. He wrote, quote, Only Ptolemy's eminent and creative work in astronomy is an exception. End quote. Similarly, Toulmin and Goodfield write, quote, Greek astronomers began to limit their ambitions, end quote, adding, quote, they became satisfied with making small amendments to existing mathematical theories, filling in details rather than branching out in new directions, end quote. Pagan Greek religious views also crippled Greek science. Toulmin and Goodfield note that increasing emphasis on the pagan mythological worldview, with its worship of the heavens and its religious explanations for natural phenomena, caused Greek science to lose ground. They write that the beliefs of the Greek Stoics, an early philosophical school, quote, encouraged not scientific inquiry so much as faith in divination, end quote. Historian Richard Olson identifies Greek ideological reasons for the scientific decline, writing that as a result, quote, Greek scientists seldom sought ways of developing practical consequences from their discoveries, end quote. Historian of ancient science Geoffrey Lloyd's comments include criticism of the pagan Greek cosmology and mythology, which he said led scientific inquiry into errors such as geocentrism. Professor Paul Hafner makes the same observation, writing, quote, The fundamental reason for the stillbirth of science in ancient Greece was a worldview steeped in the idea of eternal cycles, end quote, which Hafner believes, quote, undermined the concept of time, end quote. Various other scholars likewise suggest Greek science reached its limits for reasons within Greek civilization itself. Cohen says, quote, there are signs that Greek science had indeed reached the limits set to its natural progress, end quote. Lloyd cites, quote, the anthropocentrism of Greek cosmology and science, end quote, as a contributing factor. Egyptian scholar Midat Ghazale likewise says the decline of Greek science, quote, must be sought within the Greek civilization itself, end quote. Greek science in the Roman era. What about the Roman era? Did the Romans revive Greek science only for it to be strangled again by Christianity? No. In fact, the Romans showed little interest in developing a philosophy or method of science and did nothing to revive Greek science from its decline. In fact, various pagan philosophical systems during the Roman era contributed to disinterest in scientific inquiry. Toulmin and Goodfield note that the philosophy of Epicurus which was popular among the Romans, quote, did no more than Stoicism to encourage scientific work, end quote, adding, quote, if anything, the Epicureans were even less interested in questions of astronomy, end quote. They go on to write that Epicurean philosophers, quote, turned men's attention right away from the heavens, arguing that what went on in the sky was of no concern to men, end quote. As an example, they cite the Roman Epicurean poet Lucretius, 
who not only denied that people could live on the other side of the Earth, but also denied the Earth was a sphere, a concept which Toulmin and Goodfield observe, quote, had been a commonplace in Athens for several centuries, end quote. How Christians Revived Greek Science Instead of being killed by Christianity, Greek science was revived by Christians. Not only were they responsible for preserving and copying earlier Greek texts on a very wide range of subjects, they took particular care to copy, study, analyse and build on the philosophical and proto-scientific observations of the earlier Greeks. Although progress was crippled badly by the devastating fall of the Roman Empire, important centres of learning such as Alexandria in Egypt were largely unaffected. Historian of science Ethymios Nicolaidis writes that during the Christian era after the fall of Rome, quote, mathematics soon regained its status as the scientific knowledge leading to true wisdom and reverence, end quote, and cites Christian scholars such as Leo the Mathematician and John the Grammarian as instrumental in, quote, the revival of ancient Greek philosophy and science, end quote. The 6th century Christian philosopher John Philoponus was particularly influential. He broke dramatically with the scientific models received from Aristotle and earlier Greek scholars and pioneered the scientific method, carrying out practical experimentation for the first time in the history of Western science. He disproved Aristotle's understanding of physics and the pagan Greek understanding of the universe. He also arrived at new insights into the understanding of three-dimensional space and physical laws. Philoponus almost single-handedly reignited the Western scientific tradition, and his work was copied, studied, and distributed by both Arab and Christian scholars. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy notes that Philoponus' work was so influential that for the next 1,200 years it inspired key scientific insights by breakthrough scholars such as John Buridan, Nicolas Oresmi, Levi Gersonides, Giovanni Bonaventura, Giovanni Piccodella Mirandola, Galileo Galilei, and even Isaac Newton. But that's a story for another time.